Um, hey Chris, this is TJ. I noticed um, at, when I looked at Sigma after I got your email that uh, there's a bunch of um, kind of tricky Python stuff in there. So I thought I would shoot you this email to try to explain some of what's going on. Um, so one of the things that shows up in there is this um, star notation here. And what this does is basically it allows you to have a, a function with, um, so this function has one, you know, definite argument in here, the A, and then this star rest just means there's a bunch of other stuff that comes after this, zero or more actually arguments come after this. So let me um, run this here to find these. Okay, so I have, um, so for example, I could say a, I could say a1, and it prints out the one and this empty um, tuple. So there's nothing in this uh, rest at this point, so it just prints out an empty tuple. If I say a1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there's a bunch of other stuff in there. Okay? So um, basically, this is just a way of path, being able to pass an arbitrary number of arguments in. And we'll, we'll look at specifically at sigma in a little bit, but I want to go through some of these pieces. So let's say, for example, oh, there's, there was, so there was another thing. So um, so you can um, make these tuples just like this. So it's, again, it's like you're, you can go ahead and just put them in, comma separated, and they make a, a group like this. Okay, notice these are parentheses, these are not brackets like you get with a list. So if we want to convert a, a, a tuple into a list, we do something, something like this. I'm going to say my list equals list my set. Okay, so now if we look at my list, see we got the square brackets, that's a list. Okay. Um, so that's one of the operations I do in there is that list thing. There's another um, piece of notation. I don't know if we went over this one. But um, so basically, you know, if you say my list zero, you get the first thing in the list. If you say my list one, you get the second thing in the list. You can also use negative numbers as indexes. So you can start going from the end. And what we do is we start from the end with negative 1 because negative 0 is just 0. So, so you need to start with negative 1 on the end. So that my list negative 1 gives you 10. My list minus 2 gives you the 4. Okay, so this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So whenever you have a list like this, there are two ways to pull out any number with a positive number or a negative number. So my list 0 is the same as my list, in this case, my list minus 4, since we have four elements in here. All right. Now there's also this thing you can do called um, slicing. So you can um, pull um, pieces of the list. So let's say I want to look at, I don't know, from 2 to 4. Does that work? Or that's, yeah. So 0, 1, 2. Oh, yeah, there's not four things, so it just goes to the end. So my list looks like my list 2, 3 would do the same thing. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So it goes from my list two to one less than that number. That's right. Okay. So it goes, it's it, the first number it pulls out from the list 
is 0, 1, 2, and then um, the last number it pulls out of the list is this minus 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, so that's why this was 4, 10. Okay. Um, so if you, you can also just, um, do stuff like this. It'll just start with, this is one, and we'll just do all the rest. If you put a colon there, or if you put a colon in the front, um, we'll do that. Or if you do, you know, you can use your negative indexing, okay? And that goes from, how did that work? OK, so that pulled the first two. Right, because it goes from the beginning to the, OK, so this is minus 1, minus 2. It goes from the beginning to right before the minus 2. OK. So um, that's the indexing stuff that you see in there. Um, there's some other funky stuff. So we see this. Here's another function right here. We're defining b of x, y, z. It's just print x, print y, print z. Um, so if we say b of 1, 2, 3, it just prints out 1, 2, and 3. But sometimes you might, um, so like for example, right here when I said, you know, my list equals uh, list my set, I had, a, I had a list of stuff that I wanted to pass in. Um, so basically when you're doing this, you're passing in um, one, two, three. What you can do is basically dereference a list. So you can say B star one, two, three. And um, it'll it'll do this our B star four seven nine. And it'll take that list and just make it look so it'll make as far as Python's concerned, this it'll turn this into this. Okay. Um, 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 um and then um Concatenation, I'm not sure if we talked about. Let me just um, so I have a list and I want to stick another um, number on here. Let's say I want to make oh. Let's make extras equals extra. Plus, what you can do is you can add um, lists together. So I can say 11, uh, 13, and then extras is that. Okay? So now maybe um, we can take a look at some of the sigma stuff. All right, so in sigma, so sigma here. I'm passing the function f and a bunch of args there. And um, I'm converting this. So this is a tuple, right? I'm converting that into a list, this arg list here. So I can do different things with it. And I'm saying do sigma. Um, so I'm. I'm pulling a slice out here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying give me all the stuff at the beginning of this of this uh, list here 
except for the last two um, arguments, and those I'm going to pass on like that. Okay, so that breaks it up. So the one I call do sigma, now I have f and the extra junk, and this is my a and my b, basically my my um, beginning and ending sigma stuff. So what do I have here? So then I say, okay, um, you know, if a is greater than b, return zero. Otherwise, um, apply that function that I passed in, whatever that f is, apply that to, and see here's my dereferencing thing, um, all the um, guys in, in extra plus a, okay, and then add that to do sigma with a plus one, so I keep incrementing a until it gets up to b. So it's basically just, you know, adding up the functions. I just fancied it up a little bit, basically writing it so that you don't have to do anything uh, special to sigma to make it able to take more um, arguments because it's already made that way. So that, that piece of 6.4 is already done for you actually. So what you can do uh, then as far as you know writing the new C and stuff like that just um, know that you can do stuff like here sigma pow is a, is a f function that's already defined you could use a, a, a built-in function or you could use a function that you created yourself for this F here um, and uh, you know then we could just put well you could just put some numbers in here let's say uh, oh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to run this guy. Okay, so now I can say something like that, and that gives me. Okay, so this isn't exactly what you're going to be looking for for your uh, new C thing, but it'll give you an idea of uh, where, where you need to go. So um, I hope that helps, and, and uh, if you still have questions, uh, shoot me another email. Take care.